when any commodity in the market, whether it be a good or a service, has a price, and that price is determined by hopefully a free market, if not at least a relatively free market, if we use that price signal and all the data it has behind it, like why is the price of gold what it is? Why is the price of oil what it is? Why is the price of Bitcoin what it is? Why is the dollar valued compared to other currencies at whatever value it is? When we use all that data and we take maybe 40 of these products and services or commodities and services, and we combine them into an index and then compare that index to housing prices, we can learn a lot. So our guest today is Jason Hartman. He's the founder and CEO of the Hartman Media Company and the Hartman Foundation. And we're going to be talking about HCI. So Jason, give us a little bit of your background, but what does HCI mean? Sure. So thanks, Robert. The HCI is a new index that I created to try and get a better handle on real estate values and to back test them through history and then to also use the HCI, the Hartman Comparison Index, to project forward what might be coming down the pike. Because as, as you've said and Kim has said, we are in very strange times. Everything is manipulated nowadays. Everything is a scam. I think people are catching on. You know, back in 2005, 2004, when I was giving talks at conferences and, and then started podcasting about 2006, you talk to people about the Federal Reserve, you talk to them about monetary policy, and very few people even were in tune with that. You know, but now people are really getting it. And I think cryptocurrencies to some extent are responsible for that. People understand what fiat money is now by authority. You know, it's it's fake money. That's what we basically have with every currency on earth. It's it's all by fiat, by authority. And so how do we value anything in a highly manipulated, highly censored environment? Big tech companies are censoring everybody. You can't speak the truth anymore. It's like George Orwell's book, 1984. It's, you know, it's a very discouraging time and very disconcerting in many ways. But one thing that has a lot of data in it, and this is why communism and socialism have been a disaster every time in history and every place on earth, is because they didn't have the data of accurate price signals. And price signals contain just a fortune, a wealth of data in them. So when any commodity in the market, whether it be a good or a service, has a price, and that price is determined by hopefully a free market, if not at least a relatively free market. If we use that price signal and all the data it has behind it, like why is the price of gold what it is? Why is the price of oil what it is? Why is the price of Bitcoin what it is? Why is the dollar valued compared to other currencies at whatever value it is? When we use all that data and we take maybe 40 of these products and services or commodities and services, and we combine them into an index and then compare that index to housing prices, we can learn a lot. And I think we can really mitigate any downside risk and possibly have a lot of upside potential by using if, that data. If, if the numbers are accurate. You're right. Absolutely. And, and you know, so Kim, Kim and I remember when how did they measure the value of a rent? They, they basically said, if you were living in your house, what would you charge yourself rent for? Yeah. That's how they got the rental value. Yeah. And then, you know, Kim and I, Kim, we bought our first house together. Kim had to go to our gold depository because we didn't <laughs> charge the dollar. Right, Kim? Yeah, we had, we had been stacking silver bars in our closet in our master bedroom in La Jolla, oh. California when we were pretty broke. Yeah, uh, we were buying our own our personal residence up in Portland, Oregon, and they said we we need twenty three thousand dollars now, quick. Right. Because our credit was so bad, it's like we had to jump on this. Right. Uh, and so yeah, I I took the silver bars and in, in grocery bags to the precious metals dealer down the street and got our twenty three thousand yeah, dollars. You, you know yeah. that that is a great story. See, if someone watching or listening has been 
saving to buy maybe their first rental property and say they've been doing that for 10 years no one told them they had to save their money denominated in dollars they could have saved that money that wealth as they accumulated it they get paid in dollars but they could immediately convert them to gold silver cryptocurrencies oil orange juice rice anything right they could convert them to anything and as they stored that wealth the question is if it took them five years or 10 years, what was it worth vis-a-vis -vis the dollar? You know, everything in life is uh, understood. Just Go just ahead. Hang on, hang on, because you're getting a little too complex for the rich dad crowd here. Okay, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, simple. I was watching the Suns game and there was a uh, realtor there with her husband and she had tax problems and she was sitting with her accountant this guy should go to jail, I think, personally. But yeah. I, was, I was listening to the conversation. And apparently, because the real estate market's been going up so fast, she's, she and her husband have been buying and flipping as well as selling, you know, as a broker. So they're getting commissions. So they were flipping properties and all this. But they never paid the taxes. Yeah. <laughs> Kim, Kim, I'm sitting there. I'm at Tomas Hills listening to this horror story. You know, I'm going... And I said, holy mackerel. So her solution was she was going to flip another property. Right. Yeah. And I said to her. Right the taxes? Yep. Yeah. And I said, he's just making it worse. And yeah. she had no idea what I was talking about. She was going to short-term capital gains. Right. She was going to flip another property. And on top of that, I said, what if the market crashed? And she said, the words I've been waiting to hear. Oh, real estate prices always go up. Yeah, right. <laughs> so can you remember those words? <laughs> I do remember those words. And that's why, that's why Jason, I, I like this index that you're doing because everybody says, oh, the prices are through the roof and they're yeah. this and they're that and they're so inflated. And But you're saying maybe not because let's compare it to real goods and services and yeah. see exactly where they do stand, not just opinions. Everybody's on opinions today. Everybody, I know. Very yeah. few facts out there. A lot, A of, lot of opinions it. with little data, right, Kim? Yeah. 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 I couldn't agree more. Well, and, and the data is accurate. That's my other bitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's you a know, huge thing. Not, but understand how bad it is. If somebody is afraid you to give you true data because they might get deplatformed. Yeah. I mean, this whole yeah. thing, that's, that's, that's like that woman, that realtor with her husband, with a CPA going to flip her way out of a tax problem. <laughs> I'm going, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. I think it was your book, Robert, Who Took My Money, where you gave the comparison of the dairy farmer versus the cattle rancher, I believe. And the flippers are the cattle ranchers, right? But at some point, that game of musical chairs ends and those prices don't go up and the flipping doesn't always work, right? So better to be a cash flow how, how investor. Did into, how did you get into this, Jason? What's, what's your background? Into real estate in general? In, yeah, into everything you're doing these days. Yeah. And tell us um, what you're doing these days. You know, I grew up poor. I lived in Los Angeles. I had a single mom. It was a struggle for sure. And I uh, saw an infomercial when I was 16 years old of a guru. This was before the Kiyosaki era. And I got his book and I read three chapters and put it down and my mom read the rest. And about two years later, she said, you know, I've been checking out these real estate seminars. There's one in Anaheim. Why don't you go? And so I went. And that really inspired me to get my real estate license to just kind of learn the basics in the business. And six months into my career, I was 20. I bought my first rental property from a client of mine. Yeah. So it's Who been a great ride. Who in those days? There was a lot of them. Oh, that was Robert Allen. Oh, yeah. 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 Down. Down. Correct. Back, well. back in the old days. Yeah. 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 We read that book. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, those were yeah, the photos. It can change your life. A book can change your life. Absolutely. It can. I mean, look at Rich Dad Poor Dad has changed millions and millions of lives. I mean, you know, the first time I heard about Rich Dad Poor Dad was when I was in Australia. I was on a trip for a couple of weeks in Australia. And my friend and I that were cruising around Australia met a couple and he, he, he mentioned Rich Dad Poor Dad. I'd never heard of it before. And this was in 1999, I think. So uh, explain the Hartman uh, Commodity Index. So the comparison index is basically, it's all about comparison, for example. You know, how do you know anything without comparison? You know, if you have a rich dad and a poor dad, you have an understanding of two schools of thought, 
right? And I think we do that with pretty much everything in life, Robert. We compare things, and that's how we value things. And so if you compare the price of real estate to this basket of commodities and services, I think you can really determine a lot by it. So let's take gold, for example. Well, that's, you know, that's not what the HCI does, Robert? Yeah. Yeah. It compares, yeah. And so, they can, so what happens when they go on there and they have a two bedroom, one bath and podunk, can they compare that with gold? What, what is the comparison? Yeah, well, the comparison is like this in the index. So if you go back to say 1970, when we were still on the gold standard before Nixon took us off, the median price house was $22,000 and change. And back then gold was 35 bucks. So if you wanted to buy the median price house in gold, it would take 646 ounces of gold. Today, the median house price is about 348,000, you know, give or take, depending on what index you're listening to. Gold is about almost $1,800. So today to buy that house, it would only take 194 ounces of gold. What was a, what was a 1970 comparison? 646. So today it's less than a third. It's cheaper priced in gold. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Yeah. That is really cool. Kim, what do you think about this? I mean, why, why is this important to you? Because, you know, as an investor, why do you want to know the comparison of things? So I, I want to know what's for, well, so for example, I think you kind of said it, Jason, is most people think you have to hold, hold cash. You have to buy properties in cash. But there's other places you could put your money where the value of that money could increase dramatically. And then your, your worth is more so. Um, right. Prices come down actually if you can do that. Yeah, it's absolutely. And it's interesting you say that, Jason, because I was at the uh, sushi bar at AJ's Market, and I was talking to one of the girls. Those two, these two girls, they're they're escapees or people from Myanmar. They ran away from there, and and they're you know the immigrants are busting their butts. I said, "How many days a week do you work?" She says, seven days a week." And so I said, "Why?" She says, "Because I'm going to buy a house." Yeah. And all I wanted to say is, oh, God, it's kind of the top of the market, but I didn't, I didn't want to dampen the dream. Oh, a dream, a dream. But just working, she not, you know how immigrants, like the, when the Vietnamese came, they never stopped working. They work hard, yeah. Yeah, and they saved up and they bought real estate or yeah. gold. So anyway, that's why your, your Hartman Comparison Index is a crucial thing for, I should take it to that sushi girl. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Exactly. And, you know, Robert and Kim, it depends where, right? You know, there are three basic types of markets in the United States or around the world, linear markets, cyclical markets, and hybrid markets. And they do act differently. The high flying markets along the West Coast and the expensive Northeast and where I am in South Florida, those markets are getting pretty frothy for sure. But the good linear markets in the Midwest and the Southeast that aren't that expensive, I would argue that they're still pretty cheap priced in a lot of things when compared to a lot of things. So, you know, you, you were asking, what does this mean to people? What do I do with this information? And we only took one commodity so far, just gold. But it, it means two things. One is that it informs you of how you might want to save your money or store your wealth. Do you want to store it in dollars that are constantly being debased by the government and the Federal Reserve because they're just printing more? I mean, there's two things that value everything on Earth, scarcity and utility. If something is scarce, it's going to have more value. And if something is useful, it's going to have more value. More and, taxes and political influence. Right. Yeah. Well, yes, those, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. No yeah. question. And so, you know, gold is scarce and it does have value in the sense that it's been considered money for 5,000 years. So if you stored your, your wealth in gold rather than dollars, you would have been better off during this time because the pricing power or the purchasing power of the dollar has declined dramatically and gold hasn't. Okay, so so it's cheaper to buy a house in gold today, but more expensive to buy it in dollars, right? So that informs that question. How should you store your wealth? The other question it informs is what's next for the market? Is the market too expensive? Well, if you if you only think of things in dollars, then yeah, you're gonna say, hey, it looks pretty expensive. But if you think of things compared to a whole variety of other commodities, you might say it's cheap. It, it depends on the commodity you're comparing to. 
But it also depends upon the mass migrations right now. I've never seen, yeah. this, these are like the wildebeest going across Africa right now. Yeah. So, so Kim, when, when we, we just invested in oil, why do we invest in oil? Well, one of the reasons is, well, what, several reasons, but of course, tax, tax consequences taxes. are great. Taxes it's are great. We save and money by not paying taxes. And also we're, we're kind of on the inside of these, these deals. We're not, we're not buying oil shares and we, we know the operators. So I feel, I feel more um, solid that way. But I wanted to ask Jason, you know, you talk about, and we've talked about gold and silver and, and we'll comp- I wanna compare it to oil also, but why is it people are so hesitant to part with their dollars? <laughs> they like, wanna hoard their dollars. Why, do, why are they uh... doing that? Kim, that's a great question. And I would argue that they're just brainwashed, you know, dollars. I mean, what real use does a dollar have? Think about it. It's a it's a piece of, well, not exactly paper, but it's like cotton fibers or whatever it is. And with, you know, pictures of dead presidents and the value of it is constantly being debased. You know, I think Robert has these too. I think he was holding these up, if I recall correctly. One of my podcast listeners sent me Zimbabwe dollars, right? This is a hundred trillion Zimbabwe dollars right here. But what's the value of it? It's just a little collectible. It has no value, right? And so the name of something is not the same as the value of something. And so dollars, we only care what it buys us, you know? How does the Hartman comparison index work? I mean, how do you gather your information because everything's in flux? Wait, wait, one one last before we go into that. How does oil compare to gold? Yeah, oil's an interesting one, Robert, because I I would argue that oil is- so much, the oil prices. It does, no question. But if you look at it over a long period of time, those fluctuations start to even out, okay? And then it becomes more accurate. And this is why you can't just compare it to one commodity. Right. Everybody just compares housing prices to dollars. That's all they do. Why not compare to a whole bunch of things that every human needs and oil runs the world. It's the most important commodity on earth. So in 1970, oil was only $3 a barrel. If you can believe that (laughs) $3 a barrel. And if you wanted to buy the median price house back in 1970, it was $22,600. You would need to bring the seller 6,746 barrels of oil, (laughs) a lot of oil, right? And today you still need to bring them a lot of oil. The median house price now, as of June, is 348,000 and oil was $75 a barrel at the time. So today you only need to bring that seller 4,622 barrels of oil. So priced in oil, houses are cheaper, priced in gold houses are cheaper than they were 51 years ago. That's amazing. I know, but the reason I always kick in there is because, you know, we have the, the cash flow quadrant ESB and the I. Yeah, and it's inside. Well, I love that. We are, our oil, we don't pay tax on the oil. Right. So that, that, that I mean, it cuts down I mean, oil is the most efficient thing that we can use to make money. And so last, last week, just last week, we bought another share of an oil well. Mm-hmm. And not because we like the price of oil, but because we don't have to pay tax. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Exactly. And, when, and that's really what Rich Dad stands for, is we keep it as simple as possible. So your, your uh, Hartman comparison index is interesting. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole other degree you can take beyond that. It's like I give Gammon a whole bunch of... George Allegrief and Peter Schiff and Mike Maloney said, why are you guys living in Puerto Rico? Yeah. Oh, yuck. Yeah. <laughs> right. A lot of my friends have moved there and including Mark Moss, of course, that we uh, both are friends with. Why? Yeah. Well, you don't have to pay, you don't have to pay tax anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. If yeah. You want to educate and enlighten people on tax. Yeah. Are, are, Robert, I'm curious, are you doing oh, wait, oil uh, and gas exploration? Hang, or hang on, hang. This is not, we're not an educational program. Okay. So Kim, explain how that works with us. How what works? The oil and gas stuff. So the oil and gas we get, we get is the, you know, the um, tax code, as Tom Wilwright says, it's a, it's a book of incentives. And right. so because the government doesn't want to go into oil production, we get incentives if we fund oil production. So, so we if, get major tax write-offs as a result. 
So what we do is, that, let's say I put a million dollars in oil exploration, we got 400,000 back. Wow, yeah, incredible. You think about that, so that's, so that's what Rich Dad, Rich Dad is more on the B and the I side than the E and the S side. But, and our job was to make it simple as possible. So your, your index is really good, but I, and the, and the sad thing about it is like I was talking about that real estate broker who's flipping houses. Now she has a tax problem, so she's gonna flip some more. And then the, the two refugees from Myanmar, they're gonna work seven days a week and they're saving cash. Yeah. It's really interesting. And so I wish people were listening to this. Any comments on that, Jim? Yeah, and, and to the point on the on the oil and, and taxes, um, we still have to do a lot of searching to find a good oil deal. We're never right. going to just do a deal for the tax incentives alone. It's got to that oil deal has to make sense and make financial sense and be a nice cash flow to our, our bottom line. But what I like, Jason, too, about your your comparison index, the Hartman comparison index. I think more importantly, what you're teaching people is where do you store your money? Yeah. Where do you store your wealth? Where do you store that your, your, your value of what you have? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's crucial. And because everybody is trained to, to hold dollars and pesos and yuan and all of yeah. that. Um, but this is, I think that's probably the most valuable lesson of all. It, it, it's true because if you would have stored it in oil or gold, you would have been much better off than dollars. Correct. Yeah. And taxes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And tax wise, that's another big benefit, of course. Yeah. And and political incentives. That's why those guys like Gammon down in Puerto Rico because right. politics. I say you don't have to pay tax here. So I don't pay tax here in anyway. Yeah. But anyway, that the thing I like about what you're doing, Jason, is getting people to think. Yeah. You know, that is the most important thing you can do today is think, compare, look at different you know, how you do this, how do people do that. But most people, I guess, when we're at when we're in Miami together, you know, the, with uh, George Gammon, this girl comes up to me. She says, "Should I buy real estate?" Uh-huh. And I lost it. I've been here. I've been in this business too long, Jason. I said, "Holy mackerel!" I mean, you know, they they have this teacher. Please, please tell me what to do. Right. Yeah. You know? Instead of think it through yourself, you mean, right? That's the lesson. Who said thing is the hardest work there is? Yeah. That's why so few people engage in it. Yeah. That's uh, Earl Nightingale, I think, <laughs> was right. used to say that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm glad is you're getting people to think, Yeah. not give them answers. It's a very right. big difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, Jim, and then another you. question I have is because um, we didn't talk about inflation or deflation, but inflation and deflation is only measured in a currency, right? In a fiat. Right. It's not measured in real value of goods and services. Yeah. Yep, I, I agree. Uh, but but it is measured in the sense that we lose purchasing power of those goods and services, which is sad. That's how they're impoverishing the population and concentrating wealth among the super rich through debasing the, the dollars because poor people and people that don't listen to your show and don't read the Rich Dad books, they don't understand how to store their their wealth, how to store their hard earned labor, which is really what you're doing. You're trading your labor. I mean, if you're at the, if you're at the, you know, E part of the quadrant, right? You're trading your labor for dollars, which is not the best way, but that's what most people do. And then they get taxed at the highest rate and then they store it in dollars. And the the Fed and the government is stealing out from under it. It's a inflation is a pickpocket. It's a thief. That's you know, exactly what Buffett said is one of the greatest punishments there is, is inflation. Yeah. Inflation is very simply it's volume times velocity. So mm-hmm. they're printing as much money as possible and they're speeding up the spending of it. So right. that's so that so that's why John Williams of Shadow Stats was saying it's not at 15%. So that means mom and pop or the, the girl working cutting up you know sushi, whatever she's doing. He's falling behind at such high rate of speed. It's terrible. Yeah. So let me ask again, Robert, you said it's so inflation is measured in volume and velocity. So the more money is being printed and then they're spending it like crazy with all the stimulus programs and everything. So that that's like a perfect storm for inflation. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And and that's what George Gammon's last thing was on the uh, repo and reverse repo markets and all this is very simply saying is that because the thing was deflating, they had to inflate the volume and inject it directly via stimulus straight to the market. Generally, they have to go through the banks to borrow money. 
So Kim and I had our advantage because we could borrow money. Right. But people couldn't borrow money anymore. So they printed trillions and they injected via STEMI checks. And then the Robin Hood and Bitcoin, I mean, and Bitcoin yeah. takes off and all this stuff goes crazy. So the reason, you know, Jason, I was really happy to have you come on because the Hartman Commodity Index is we're in a mania right now. Mm-hmm. Man, this we is, are. We've never been here in all the history of the United States. We have never been here before. Yep. And so what your index is doing is giving people just some comparisons so you can f- figure out what's going up and what's coming down. Understand where you are. Yeah, we are in a mania and people in manias, Robert, they just oh. lose their head. They just get so they're so afraid of loss. That fear of loss yep. drives them FOMO. to make bad decisions. FOMO and greed, fear of missing out and greed. You know, the yep. thing that was funny was that there was a tulip of mania. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's one of the funniest things I ever read was that there were <laughs> tulip bulbs are going through the roof, you know? Oh, yeah. And the funniest story I ever read was this one person comes in from overseas and he didn't know it was a tulip bulb and ate it. <laughs> I wonder how, wonder how that turned out. <laughs> well, Jason, in, in terms of your index and all and what you, cause you study a lot and you, you do a lot of research. What do you see coming down the pike? What's your crystal ball say? You know, Kim, the crystal ball is a tough one, but I would say that I think we've got a ways to go on the real estate market. I think it's it's cooling a bit. People are taking a little bit of a breather right now, I think. That's just a very new thing, so it's hard to say that if that'll continue. I think overall, the real estate prices are going to hold up for another year or two pretty well. Uh, the stock market, I don't know, you know, and the economy itself is built on a house of cards the whole thing is largely fake. But the question is, will it crash someday? Of course it will. But how long can they kick the can down the road? When you got the biggest military on earth and you're the biggest country, the biggest economy, you know, you can kick that can down the road a long time when, you, when you've when you got that reserve currency status. There's a lot of games that the U.S. can benefit from that they play. So, so Jason, I just listened to my friend Jim Records. Mm-hmm. This is like just waiting for that last snowflake. Right. Yeah. And then, <laughs> that, <starts. laughs> that last oh, little last bit. Yeah. Anyway, don't know. It, it could be with that ne- next piece of sushi that girl cuts. <laughs> yeah. Could be. 